Splatoon. I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's one of Nintendo's smartest moves in years. I think it's a really unique game. Uh, and it's got a lot of good things going for it. The soundtrack in particular really helps bring this game to life, so today we're going to analyze some of the music and see how it all works. Splatoon takes much of its aesthetic from late 90s and early 2000s urban culture. The clothing, slang, and bright visual design all harkens back to a time that many players will remember. This atmosphere is reinforced with the game's soundtrack, which was largely composed by uh, Nintendo musicians Toru Minigishi and uh, Shiho Fuji. Minigishi has been working with Nintendo for a really long time, uh, particularly on the Zelda franchise. He was the uh, sound director for Twilight Princess, and Fuji is known for her work on Animal Crossing and the uh, Super Mario Bros. Wii titles. Splatoon's multiplayer campaign is very intense, and the driving punk rock sound really adds to that energy. Probably the most famous of these is Splatak, the uh, main theme of the game. It has a simple arrangement consisting of punchy, over-the-top drums, uh, overdriven guitars and bass, and various synth leads, mostly uh, vocoded gibberish that makes up the Squid Kid language. But a lot of the punk sound comes from a composing technique called modal mixture. Splatak is in the key of A, but is it A major or A minor? Well, much like the Squid Kids themselves, it's both, and it seamlessly works between the two of them. The main riff, for example, relies entirely on the uh, minor scale before we hit this C-sharp power chord. Both the uh, C-sharp and G-sharp come from the A major scale. It's unexpected, and when I first heard it, it kind of took me back for a second. It's to emphasize that point, the interval between the G5 and C-sharp 5 power chords is a tritone, which is a very dissonant interval. I've got the notes circled here so you can see. That kind of looks like a face. Wait, there we go. Most rock and blues music is based on the idea of modal mixture, but it's this out of nowhere tension that is a really defining part of the punk sound. Looking at the single player campaign, um, Octo Valley's music is very different from that of a lot of the rest of the game. It's a hub world, so naturally it's gonna be a lot more relaxed and laid back, but there's a certain scale that's used that I find very intriguing. The Octolings are almost like aliens to the Inklings, especially when you consider that massive UFO. Octo Valley's music makes heavy use of the Dorian mode, which is uh, a scale very commonly used to create mysterious, kind of otherworldly uh, atmospheres. You see that E natural there? That's outside of the key. We've taken the sixth degree of the G minor scale. Normally that would be E flat, and we're raising it up to an E natural. It's a very small change, but it makes a huge impact. If you want to know more about the Dorian mode and about modes in general, I made a uh, an in-depth post on the subject on a blog called Video Game Music Academy. I'll link to that in the description. Speaking of scales and sheet music, one of the sunken scrolls has a very interesting piece of information. These are the notes to the Squid Sisters song during the final boss battle. It's in the key of E flat minor and it's based entirely in the uh, E flat minor pentatonic scale. The song is said to be a sort of national anthem for the Inklings, so the pentatonic scale makes a good choice uh, considering its prevalence in traditional Chinese and uh, Japanese music. If you're up for working on your ear training, I highly suggest studying the harmony behind this melody in the song. It fluctuates throughout, placing the same melody in a new harmonic background as the song progresses. Lastly, I want to bring up the dynamic use of the music in Splatoon. The tutorial music and the single player themes as well both evolve as you uh, move across the landscape. The tutorial, for example, uh, starts out on a simple bass riff uh, and continually adds more instruments as you progress, eventually developing into a four-person ensemble version of Splatak. As you near the end of the tutorial, uh, it begins to close back down again, eventually returning to a simple bass line. 
The single player music uses this idea in a bit of a different way. It adds a loud metal striking hit during battles, and at the last checkpoint, the key modulates upward to heighten the intensity. I think it's clear that the music of Splatoon has been carefully crafted uh, in order to bring this world to life and it does so with flying colors. This is just the tip of the iceberg as far as the game's music goes because there's really so many other genres uh, represented in the soundtrack. A lot of care has been taken to make this soundtrack an accurate representation of the culture that it's so immersed in. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments or email me at ungakuconcept at gmail.com. And until next time, stay fresh. I didn't drop as many ink puns as I wanted to.